Hello, I'm delighted to be able to share some of our recent work on wettability. So here I'll put up the slideshow. So okay, so we're talking about topology and energy balance to characterize wettability in porous materials. And I'd like to acknowledge my co-workers from Imperial College London who did most of the work. But let's dive straight in to show what it is we're interested in. What we're showing here is a three-dimensional X-ray microscope image of a small piece of rock about five millimeters across. And we're showing the solid here in red, but we're interested in wettability, we're interested in contact angle, we're interested in the angle at which two fluids make when they hit the solid surface, but looking inside a porous material. So what is shown here is the fluids, one of the fluids, these are blobs of supercritical carbon dioxide imaged within the pore space. The different colors simply show the different blobs. We take one blob as an example. Now this is quotes the raw image. That's actually what we see from the X-ray microscopy. So we've got the CO2 in the middle, that in blue there is shown uh, the water and the solid is shown in red. So what we're going to do is we're going to extract what's called the three phase contact line where the two fluids hit the solid and you notice they form loops around the solid and we take a plane that's perpendicular to that three phase contact line to define the contact angle. So we're just zooming around a bit but then we'll settle down and uh, show what we mean. So we got it here. This is the solid. This is the carbon dioxide. This is the water. Typically, we measure contact angle through the water phase. So this would be a contact angle of about 45 degrees. That's great. And then we now have automatic methods so that from billion voxel images, we can spit out millions of contact angle values as we go along the contact line. But the problem here is that we have to evaluate that geometrically where two phases hit the solid that's exactly where the errors in segmentation and the imaging are the worst. So we can do it. Here are some examples showing the frequency of contact angle against the contact angle for three systems with different wet abilities. But we tend to find a range of contact angle and there is a concern that quantitatively, this isn't necessarily terribly accurate. So is there another approach? We're gonna talk about two approaches, one using topology and one using energy balance that we've developed in the last year. So let's talk about topology. We're inspired to do this by the work of Sun et al. from Ryan Armstrong's group. You probably know that the sum of the exterior angles around a closed loop is two pi. If we have a smooth surface here, we can define a curvature, one over the radius of curvature. And if we integrate that plus the exterior angles, we get to two pi. And we can imagine this being a contact line loop. But we're in three dimensions, so what happens in three dimensions? Well, in three dimensions, we have a remarkable theorem, the gauss bonnet theorem, that says that the integral of this Gaussian curvature, which is you've got two radii of curvature in three dimensions, one in one direction, one in an orthogonal direction. If you take the product of those and integrate round an object, this is equal to four pi times an Euler characteristic, which is a measure of topology. But if we've got a contact with a surface, and imagine this is phase one water, and this is the contact angle, then there is an additional term because it's no longer smooth. There's a, there's a kink, isn't there? So we have to include that. And that's included in the deficit curvature. And maybe that deficit curvature is related to contact angle. Well, of course it is. So we've got a complex diagram looking at it. Um, we can evaluate this deficit curvature, and it depends on two things. One is the contact angle, theta, so we're okay there. And the other is this angle beta, which is the angle that the contact line makes with the solid. So let's make a simple assumption. Let's assume that on average, the solid is more or less flat. This beta value then is pi over two, 90 degrees. So this becomes one, this term disappears. We're finding an average, so we just go two pi <clears throat> times an average angle. So that's what we get to, a simple approximate relationship the integral over the solid disappears because we assume that it is on average flat. So we have here two pi times n, we do it for each contact line loop, so n is the number of loops. This is your average contact angle, four pi, and then just this integral of Gaussian curvature. And the beauty here is twofold. One is it's using this pretty rigorous 
idea in integral topology, right? So we can't really wriggle out of that one. And the second thing is it replaces this worrying about the geometry just where it's least known with an integral of a curvature over a meniscus. So it should be a lot more robust, although it does make some approximations. So that's plan A. Plan B is an energy balance approach. And the reason why we do this is even if what we're doing is correct, so we have what we call a geometric angle, we can imagine a case where phase one is displacing phase two and say here we have a surface that's quite oil wet. It repels phase one. So then at rest, we may find an angle that's quite low, but for displacement, the angle has to be higher. And the thing is, we're interested in displacement. One thing is displacing another in a porous medium. We want models that model that displacement. We don't want the contact angle at rest. We want the contact angle when something moves. So how do we go about that? So in order to do that, we need to derive a contact angle actually based on an energy balance. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to get a clean sheet here to do the um, energy balance. OK, so here we have it. So let's, let's see what it is we're talking about. So imagine we've got a region of a porous medium like that. Okay. What I'm shading here is the solid, which I'm going to label S. OK. So we've got phase one and phase two, and we have an interface between them. And then phase one displaces phase two, so the interface moves. So what's the energy balance? Phase one is pushing against phase two, that's P dV work. So we can write here, okay, P dV one, okay, that's your P dV work. So what is it equal to? What is it doing is it's converting pushing into a surface energy. Okay, so what's your surface energy? Your surface energy is going to be an interfacial tension, because that's an energy per unit area, times the change in area between the two phases. Okay? Okay? Because between the, two, the meniscus. But we've got another term, haven't we? Because we've also changed the area between the phases and the solid. And here you have to be a little bit careful with the signs. You can easily get yourself into a muddle here. But I can tell you that this is the correct way of doing the signs. It's minus sigma 2s. That's the energy per unit area between phase 2 and the solid. Sigma 1s. And then that's the change in the area between 1 and s. OK. Well, that's great. That's your energy balance. but doesn't have a contact angle. How are we going to get a contact angle here? Well, that's easy. For those of you who know your Young equation, and I'm going to show it here, this difference in the surface energies is just your sigma cos theta. Then this P dV, P, what is P? It's the pressure difference between phase one and phase two. That's a capillary pressure. But there is a subtlety here. Capillary pressure is normally oil minus water, two minus one, not one minus two. So actually, this is minus PC, dV1. And then PC can be related with the Young-Laplace equation. So we get here sigma times curvature. Well, we've seen curvature before. This is the total curvature. It's the sum of the curvature in the two orthogonal directions. Now we're going to do something just to simplify this a little bit. Is we're going to write, instead of capital A's, we'll write a little a, which is a big A per unit volume. Okay. And then we can also write, in terms of saturation, the volume per unit, volume of one per unit, total volume of the pore space, phi, which is the porosity, S is the saturation, is the volume of phase one divided by the total volume. Okay. So delta V1 okay, over V can be written as pi s1 over v. Okay, so now we've got the equation. These are all going to be divided, these are all going to be divided by the, the volume here and become little a's. Then you also notice that the interfacial tension cancels out in each of these cases. Okay, and so we're going to rearrange the equation and simplify, and I'm not going to go through it in too much detail, 
but uh, hopefully you can see where this comes from. We've got a delta A1s from here, which is then gonna have the contact angle cos theta. Then we've got our term with the PDV work, which turns into a curvature times a change in saturation. And then we've got the change in the interfacial area between phases one and two. So that's our final equation, okay? This is my energy balance, and it defines the contact angle that you put into a model to get conservation of energy, assuming that all the injected energy is converted into interfacial energy. Okay, so that's my energy balance approach. So now let's see where this gets us. So if we get the slides back up, energy balance equation, well, we derive that. Um, the beautiful thing is you can extend it to three phase flow. So we've done that, very elegant equations, but uh, I'm not gonna dwell on them, but you can, you can have energy balance for any number of phase flows. Okay, let's test it out. So we've got some imaging data sets here. This is on a sandstone, a water wet, and a mixed wet rock. Um, I've already given the game away with the contact angles. So let's see what goes on. Using topology, we haven't uh, done this in so much detail. So um, we've actually looked at a simulation where we've done a lattice Boltzmann simulation where we've put in a contact angle of 45. What have we got out? A contact angle of 43 for two porous linear. So that looks pretty good. However, there's still a lot more work to do. Individual clusters will have very different values of contact angle we haven't tested out on mixed wet media. So still some work there, maybe to refine some of the approximations we're using, but it's looking promising. Energy balance, we're sort of six months ahead. Um, we've shown this, the water wet case, 48. The mixed wet case, which being contact with, with crude oil, 95 degrees, looking good. The geometric angle for the water wet case is sort of close to 90, which doesn't seem to make much sense. The mixed wet case is also rather similar and lower, and again, we think these are hinged angles. So we think the geometric angles are not as sensitive a discriminator of wettability, but also not giving the right angles for a displacement. Okay, so here's the, here's the uh, equation I've used again, written neatly. We can extend this to three-phase flow. So here is the equivalent equation in for three-phase flow. Uh, we have, again, two data sets here on limestone. Um, the beautiful thing here is if it's water wet, no surprises, oil water contact angle, 48, very similar. Um, oil spreads on gas, between gas and water, so uh, that contact angle zero, and okay, uh, the gas water contact angle is also low, no surprises. When we alter the wettability, in this particular case with a limestone, we see it's strongly oil wet, contact angle between oil and water way above 90 degrees. The gas oil contact angle, the oil doesn't really spread, it's wetting rather than spreading, is not zero. And now we find something remarkable. Theta one, three, the contact angle between gas and water is greater than 90 degrees. What that means is water is the most wetting phase. Gas is intermediate wet. It doesn't go in all the big pores. It has huge consequences for flow and storage um, in oil reservoirs where we have three phases present. So we've uh, introduced concepts in topology and energy balance. There's a lot more work to do to try and relate the two approaches to test it out. But we do have two key things. One is looking at topology and connectivity, and the other is looking at energy balance. And I think there's lots of potential there. So I'd just like to end by acknowledging the industrial sponsors of our work. So thank you very much. <laughs>